for Life would like to thank all of our sponsors. Mountain View Guide Service. J3 Outdoors. Lennon's Lures. Wolf Creek Products. And PCS Outdoors. The Hague Spring Clip by J3 Outdoors. Simple, fast, efficient. It's here, the most innovative field dressing kit ever, developed by Raptor Razor. Its huge ergonomically designed hook on the Mako cuts quick with precision. The big game Skinner cuts through the toughest of places, saves you time in the field. Each kit comes with multiple blades, completely interchangeable. It's like no other knife made. For the full line of accessories, go to our website, www.raptorrazor.com. That's www.raptorrazor.com. Furlife proudly welcomes Kitchell's Lures and Scents. PCS Outdoors is America's best fishing, hunting, and trapping outlet, located in Oscoda, Michigan. They offer a full line of hunting, fishing, and trapping supplies, as well as tanned fur garments and products. PCS Outdoors carries an impressive line of hunting and trapping lures and scents, including Lennon's Lures. For all your hunting, fishing, and trapping needs, please check out PCSOutdoors.com. Hey, welcome back to Fur Life TV. I'm your host, Brian Flowers. This week, I'm with Jason Leakway, Jason and Holly Leakway, uh, Leakway Trapping Supplies and Taxidermy. Uh, Jason, nice seeing you again, buddy. Yeah, you too. Uh, Season's wound down, you know, turkey season's in effect. We're here at the shop. He's going he's gonna to demonstrate uh, how we put up a fox. So you guys can maybe learn something and, you know, get the, the best money for your, for your efforts. So, yeah. yeah, just explain what you're doing and why you're doing it. And All right. Um, first thing we do, um, make sure everything's combed out real good. No burrs, no dirt, nothing like that. Um, it's best to do that before you start anything with, with any animal. Um, just uh, give it a good brush. And I always just kind of run my hands down through, make sure that uh, you didn't miss anything. Um, the red fox, they pretty basically got the white belly and the, the red back hair. Um, there's a distinctive line. You just make a make a cut from heel to heel. Heel to heel and then uh, I come down maybe maybe two and a half, three inches on the tail, start my cut. Go on either side of the vent and right up to that first cut that I made. The money cut, basically. See, that's pretty handy. You got yourself a magnet right there on the yep, side. Yeah, huh? keep everything there. I don't like to be fumbling and looking for any of my tools, anything like that. Um, then they fall. I use my fingers a lot instead of the knife. Um, you're not going to cut a hole using your fingers. So I basically I got a, a, a Y cut in there. Um, before I go any further, the first thing I do is so start on the front leg, right about the heel. 
and work my way right up to that elbow. It's a relief cut. It'll help you save you a lot of headaches later. Um, you'll see when I get down that far on this fox. Um, and I just here again put put my knife down. You don't want any any holes. You got a real thin skin to them. Yeah, I got a very thin skin. That's why I I use my knife only when I need to. Um, get down here to the tail. You can just push your thumb right through, open that up. You know, work it right down. Like I said, I was I started my cut right here, about two and a half, three inches down. Um, just a simple tail puller. I use a heavy duty aluminum one. Um, the plastic ones work, but uh, I wear them out. A lot of guys have problems with that tail. I, when I get on there, I, I push with that hand, pull with that hand, and I, I, I very rarely do I ever pop mm -hmm. the tip of the tail off. Um, just open that up. That's really important to open that up. If you don't, it will not dry. It'll rot. Um, it'll slip. It'll slip. Yep. The air can't get to it. Um, and that's pretty much open one up. And then, like I said, I didn't even, my knife stays there until I get down here to the head. And I just grab and pull. Work my way around. And I'm down here to the front shoulders. I just work my, my finger and my knuckle in, work around in front legs. Like I said, it's just a regular six inch hardwood beam, nothing special. It's the same thing that, that we sell and, and pretty much every other trapping supply dealer sells. Um, this is where combing it out in the beginning, make sure there's no burrs, nothing like that. Because um, if you hit one of them on a thin skin box like that, you'll have a hole, guaranteed. Um, you can, some guys flesh these with a knife, they just pull the big fat off, cut them. I flesh everything on the beam with, with a flushing knife. Um, it's just quicker, easier for me. Um, you can get away with the, <clears throat> with the cheaper knives, there's nothing wrong with that, the wooden handle 12 inch knife. Um, you really don't need the sharp edge for a red fox ever. Um, I, I use a little bit better quality knife just because we're fleshing foxes, coon, coyotes, everything else. Um, I use this for, for deer, bear, beaver, uh, pretty much everything. But uh, you, you don't have to do a whole lot on a red fox. Um, you want to mainly take the, the big stuff off of it is, is what you're looking at. I just start right behind the ears, just work my way down. I'm just I'm, I'm not pushing really hard. I'm just just enough to get to get the loose stuff off. Just this this box was shot. So anywhere that you do have a, a bullet hole, you want to be a little more careful around it.
much all there is to it. Pull any little scragglers you have. Um, one thing I do, this isn't really that critical, but it's just a, it's a pet peeve of mine I've always done. I flip it around, slide it the, the face on, and I just clean this. There's, there's always a little bit of meat, and it may be the way I skin them. Um, I end up just knocking that off. It, it's, like I said, it's just, this is something I do. It's not that important. That would dry up without any problem. Helps me sleep better at night knowing that I And it could slip. It could. It's very possible. It's you just know. something that I have always done for some reason. I don't know where I picked that up at doing yeah. it. Um, but but any, always... any of these things that you think, the, the big eyes, you yeah, know, the ears not pinned back. Yep, you know, and, and you give that you give that fur grater that, more reason to, to check your stuff out. Yeah, the more critical he's going to be. What he's going to do, and we do it in here with the fur that we buy. If, if somebody comes in and they got their eye holes cut, you know, really big, or or they got the nose cut completely off, or or just in general, then mm -hmm. there's you know there's there's dirt and there's burrs and mud and stuff in there. That that tells me that. That he didn't very take very good care of it, right. so it makes me it makes me look at it a little bit closer. Um, but but when somebody brings fur into a buyer, that that's it's all uniform, it's all real nice, sleek looking. It it, it shows the buyer that, that you took pride in it. You know, if mm -hmm. you're going to take the animal, a harvest the animal, you might as well follow through and, and do it. And know? this is why we brought this to you, is because. This is where people make a mistake and it, it and lose a lot of money. And it's it's becoming the, the, the days of just rolling in with a pickup truck load of, of right off the line caught fur and dumping them on a buyer. It's starting to get harder and harder to find a buyer up table. Um, there's there's a lot of labor. As soon as we touch that animal, it's it's costing us money, mm -hmm. you know. Um, especially if you got pay employees and stuff, um, that, that runs into a big problem. So a lot of guys are they're they're struggling now because they can't find a buyer to buy whole animals they have to put them up so um, yeah definitely um, and as far as stretching them goes in, in here we, we use wire um, there, there's you know it's my opinion there you can you can use wood wood makes them look really nice um, they do have a nice appearance when you're handling a lot of fur you don't have time to pin because you got to pin the legs the ears the, everything needs to be pinned the in tail the, in the yeah. tail um, you know that, that's a lot of work. Um, with, with the wire, it's, it's the quickest, easiest way to do it. Um, and in, in my opinion, I, I've never seen a difference in the grading um, as long as they're put up properly um, to, to wire wood. Um, so we we use two. They're they're all number four wire stretchers for our coons and, and our, our red fox and gray fox. Um, there's two differences. My my fox stretchers are narrowed down a lot more than my coons. There's there's a there's a big difference right there, um, and that's just the, the way they're designed. They they want they want a nice uniform, whereas the coon can be a little bit wider at the nose, um, whereas the fox got more of a, a pointier nose. Um, the way I do it is I I squeeze my stretcher in the middle. I slip the slip the hide over that. While while I have a hold of that in the middle and I got slack in that, I, I make sure <clears throat> that my my front legs are square, all on the same side. I flip it over. You want to make sure that that your ears and your eyes are all even. You don't you don't want them, you know. Twisted. Yeah, one ear on one side. Yeah, right. and exactly. you don't want. I've I've had guys bring them in here where where they were literally stretched with. I had I had a front leg on the on the one side and a front leg on the other. It wasn't you know. You just didn't they didn't take pride in the in their put up. So you just want to make sure it's it's square to the stretcher. Um, and there again, make sure that your your tail and everything is is on the right side. Um, now I stretch the. I stretch the belly first with the back legs, and you just take one of the little hooks on each leg. You don't want to overstretch it. I guess these should be called drying forms, not stretchers, because you don't really want to overstretch it. I just snug it, is it, basically all I do. Um, the tail, I come down here a couple, couple inches, four, four, six inches down. Hook it there again. I just 
give it a little, uh, just a snug there. That's still, you know, it's flexible. Borax, any problem areas, and problem areas that I find on a red fox, and what I always borax, is right underneath these front legs. And if you have any, any issues with the, the bellies, red foxes tend to turn, get a green, what they call a green belly. Yeah. Um, they, I've had them do that. I called them, you know, six o'clock in the morning, checking traps, and you know it's it's noon, you know, one o'clock in the afternoon. You get the skin in them, they, they start to get that green belly. That borax just helps dry that up. It, that'll kill any bacteria. Sometimes it works its way around onto the back. I just give it a little borax. Um, you can borax up around the ears if you feel that you need it. Uh, the way we skin these out, them, them ears will dry without any borax on them at all. Um, and and I'm kind of old school, and I'm, I'm, I'm I hang these up with a fan blowing on them overnight. The next morning I come in and I flip them hair hair out. Um, the the way we're we're working on leaning towards now is basically coat, coating it with borax, um, putting it right on the stretcher. With, with, fur out. The, with the fur out, yeah, yeah. Um, it, it saves a lot of time because it, it it takes it takes a lot of my time coming down here in the mornings and trying to flip every fox. I got things I want to get done, so um, I'm I'm leaning towards that. I'm still a little old school on that though. Um, nice. There you go. So tomorrow you'll flip that one. Yep. Tomorrow we'll flip it. We just we have hooks in the <coughs> ceiling that we. Uh, Hang them up by the nose like that, um, and then I'll put, you know, I don't know what I can fit in, in just in here. I think I can do it at think 30, but we have room in the back. I can hang, you know, 150 at a shot, something like that. Um, I'll get a fan blowing when I got a lot of them, just to keep that air moving around. Um, yeah, it just doesn't have to be cold or it warm. Does, it doesn't have to be you warm. Just it just has to be circulation. Yep. And what I do is, is we have a, a coal stove in here. Um, I, I keep that thing running about what 50 degrees something like that with with the fan I got an oscillating fan mm -hmm. that just spins and circulates the air well once you get past like 69 70 degrees it's too hot They'll you're spoil. putting you're putting moisture back in yeah here. and that's what you you want the moisture out yeah you know yeah. Um, so yeah that's basically 50 degrees that even might be a little too warm sometimes um, I know a lot if if, if um, I hang one in the morning if I did one at 8 in the morning by nine ten o'clock that night, it's able to be flipped. Mm -hmm. um, so you got to kind of watch your airflow and, and what's going on. We we hang a lot of these in the back where it stays cooler. Um, so uh, mainly if if customers want them canned, I don't flip them. I let them just like that because they got to flip them to that to the leather side at the tanner anyway. Mm -hmm. I'll hang our tan fur out here because it dries faster. Um, just because it's warmer, um, and I don't have to worry about not being able to get it flipped. If you do get one that's a little too dry for you to get it flipped without tearing, you can wrap it in a damp towel, um, 15, 20 minutes maybe, something like that. Softens it up just enough to get them to get them flipped. Just to rehydrate it just enough. Um, what, what you want is you, you want it to kind of be tacky. You don't want it to be slimy. Um, and, and to flip it just, just to where it starts to get that crinkly sound to it almost um, and then you know we'll just we'll just say this one was ready to, to be flipped what I do on these wire structures you can't do this on wood I flip that nose over and I give it a tug like that now I actually grab the hind legs and I roll it now of course it'd be a lot stiffer you know yeah. what I mean but yep. And then I basically just flip it straight back on. There again, make sure everything is, is square. Usually they're dry enough that you don't have to really hook them. You know, I just kind of let them go like that. Um, that's where the, I'll pull them ears out. The more that you can do, the, the more money you make it at the end of the end of it, you know. Sweet. Well, yeah. we'll get out of your hair. Thanks yeah. again. Thanks for stopping.